Welcome to The Lake Show, where you can find out what's going on in and around Lake Loudoun. This show is brought to you by Fort Loudoun Lake Association, a nonprofit environmental conservation organization that keeps Fort Loudoun Lake safe, clean, and fun. I'm Angela Howard, the executive director, and I work with zone managers and in-house scientists who remove trash and debris daily, educate our community on pollution prevention, monitor stormwater management, and monitor the health of our streams. Today, I'm very lucky to be sitting here with Brian Ripley, and he is with the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. I had to check his badge here to make sure I was saying that correctly. And how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing fine. You good? Thank you for the invitation, Angela. Yeah, sure. So tell us what your agency does. I'm going to say it again. Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. What do you all do? Uh, we're the agency responsible in Tennessee for managing Tennessee's wildlife, managing some of our public lands wildlife management areas and also providing a public safety function on our waterways. Ah, public safety function. Mm -hmm. Elaborate on that. Uh, well, those that uh, I, I would imagine if someone's watching this television show, they do have an interest in water recreation. Uh, we're the agency that we're in the white patrol boats with the orange and green stripe on the side. We enforce the Safe Boating Act, mm -hmm. uh, which has to do with uh, safety equipment on vessels, vessel operation. Uh, boating under the influence, mm -hmm. uh, things such as that. Boating under the influence. Mm -hmm. Well, so are you a state, you're a state agency? We are a state agency. Uh, we're a, a sub-cabinet agency, meaning our director does not sit on the governor's cabinet. We are governed by a 13-member commission, which is uh, members are appointed by the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker of the house. They serve in staggered terms. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, we're divided into four regions mm -hmm. across the state. What are the four regions? Well, region one, two, three, and four. And here in East Which Tennessee, we're in region four. Oh, region four. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this commission, kind of like a board, they, mm -hmm. they watch over what you guys do. Right. And, and your, your jurisdiction is the land, as far as mm -hmm. the wildlife is concerned, mm -hmm. and the water, as far as the safety is concerned. Mm -hmm. And the fishing, of course. And, and, okay, and so certain pollution laws. So the pollution laws, being mm -hmm. that from Fort Wild Lake Association, mm -hmm. how do you enforce those? What are your pollution laws that you look out for? Well, the pollution laws typically that we work with have to do with um, um, some agricultural pollutions. Oh. We work very closely with the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, okay. uh, which regulates the vast majority of that. Uh, but other pollution laws as, as pertain to boating would have to do with marine sanitation on vessels and so forth. So they're not dumping their stuff in our lake, is that right? Well, Fort Loudon is a discharged lake and they can't treat, uh, release untreated sewage, but obviously treated sewage in a marine sanitation device, they are allowed to do that if they choose. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to the, the right before that, um, with the pollution on the sides of the, 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 the shoreline, I'm trying to get, what did you say right before? Well, uh, uh, I guess an example would be uh, if one of our officers was um, uh, working on the Tennessee River, they passed a construction site that was adjacent to the river or passed a, uh, a creek and noticed a really heavy silt load coming into that, mm -hmm. um, they would probably run that down, at least try to determine the source. Right. Uh, and then we would work with other state and local agencies to see that... Uh, those whoever's actually doing that or whatever project or activity is causing that, we can address that and mitigate it. So you're like the first line of defense. You guys are out there on the water mm -hmm. looking to see what doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. And it's things that you can take care of, you take care of. And right. then those things, you let somebody know that something's wrong. Right. And in addition to our normal hunting and fishing activities and boating safety activities. Now, some of the pollution laws, you know, we, for instance, um, if... Uh, someone was doing some development and they had tracked vehicles in the stream, mm -hmm. which is illegal, just yeah. the very nature of it. Right. Um, we could actually issue citations then and they would stop immediately. Um, typically we do, however, work with a TDAC or Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to address issues like that. Right. And like the county, I know they send down inspectors when yes. there's, and are you guys in partnership, so to speak? Well, Do you let them know that maybe you see something that doesn't we, work? We typically work with TDEC. Um, that's TDEC our, stands for? We had Tennessee it. Department of Environment and Conservation. And what do they do? And one of their many responsibilities is to monitor water quality. Right. And it's Collect fees from the people that get fined, yeah. which yes. is good because... They can collect fees, yes. 
Well, the mitigation funds, I know, right. go there because um, we've even written some mm -hmm. grants, you know, mm -hmm. to get some of those to help support us in mm -hmm. cleaning up when people are careless. Right. I know what it was I was thinking about, it's in the agriculture. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we have a scientist um, at Fort Lauderdale Lake Association, and he tests for E. coli. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the, in the past, that had been human E. Right. coli because the sewer systems, you know, good thing to say to the audience is we have gotten better there. There's not as much human mm -hmm. E. coli, but it's the animal, the mm -hmm. animal fecal matter that gets into the, the streams and, it's, and, the, and the water. It sounds like you do a lot of some of that monitoring. We do some of it, but like a lot of laws, um, you know, laws, regardless of what they are, are based on voluntary compliance. Mm. They are. People want to follow the law, or they won't. Oh, and, and if they don't, they get fined. And part of that, part of that law enforcement or law is, you know, you're modifying behavior through mm -hmm. education, education, and through through uh, um, a plausible deterrent if they don't follow the law. And that's that's any law, whether it's conservation law or or law enforcement or law enforcement in a municipality. Is based on voluntary compliance. People want to have to follow those laws. Well, and, and of course, what we do at Fort Lauderdale Lake Association is educate, right. and we hope that with education we can stop some of that. Right. But for the people who decide they're not going to stop, you know, mm -hmm. we'd like to see the fines be big enough that would make them want to stop. Mm -hmm. And from a TDEC perspective, they typically are. They can they can assess tens of thousands of dollars in fines and if they're Ill illegal activities. We don't do that. I, anything that we would work in that regard would actually be a criminal charge, albeit it would probably be a misdemeanor charge. Mm -hmm. It would still be a criminal charge. But maybe enough to make somebody stop, you hope. Maybe. So how are you paid? Well, how are you all funded? We're, uh, we, we get really no general tax revenues from the general fund. Our agency is, is funded through hunting and fishing license sales, mm -hmm. uh, and that pays for our hunting and fishing conservation work. Mm -hmm. We're paid uh, through... Uh, registration fees on boats. Mm -hmm. We also collect uh, some money through the Wallet Borough Act, uh, which is a federal statute uh, through the Safe Boating Act. The United States Coast Guard administers that money, and we mm -hmm. receive money from them based on the number of registered vessels we have in the state. So when that boat's pulled over and the officer is checking for a registration, that kind of assures a, a funding source. Uh, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> that's, that's why we check for that. Well, it also is nice for people to know that don't know what you all do and, and mm -hmm. how you're funded, that the only way that you're funded is by the people that use you. Right, right, right. right. It's kind of if you play, you pay. Right. And if, if you're not involved in what we do, then you're really not paying for us. So. so let me ask you this. What's the most grievous thing that you've seen on our Lake Loudon when it comes to pollution? You've been out there. You've got guys that come in. What's the worst thing you see from where you're looking? Well, I mean, there, there are a lot of... A lot of things you can look at. Um, now, I, I guess probably the one thing that I would encourage boaters the most to do is, is um, make sure their boats are in proper working order where you're not releasing uh, unburnt fuel mm. uh, into the waterways, uh, that their marine sanitation devices are working properly, uh, that they're not releasing untreated sewage into the waterways. Uh, <coughs> and, and ultimately, almost all the marinas have some type of pump out facility and just because Fort Loudon is a discharge lake doesn't mean that someone can't go to a marina and pump that sewage out rather than releasing it. And a lot of those are actually paid for <coughs> through grant money that we administer hmm. to marinas through uh, the National Clean Vessel Act. And that's that comes from the Department of Interior and the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. So um, there's really no reason why someone should be polluting our waters with all the money that's available to help people comply with the law. Keep it clean. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing to think that you, as a boater, would think it was okay to discharge treated sewer and then throw your kid overboard to sure. go ski in it. Sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, I guess it's that educational thing. Do you all do any kind of education? We do have, uh, there's, there's several parts of our, the education process that we have as it relates to boating. Um, obviously, uh, we require boating safety education mm -hmm. uh, for people in the state. If you're born after uh, uh, 1969, July 1 of 1969, you have to take a boating safety class. You do? I'm you sorry, do. 1980. To, uh, to, to, 89. to operate sorry, a boat. And is there an age limit on operating a boat? Well, That's been a big question. Um, <clears throat> if it's below a certain horsepower, you can operate any boat, and once you reach the age of 12, you can operate any boat that's out there by law. Hmm. Now, one of the, things, the, the uh, important thing to remember about our, the laws that govern boating safety 
is that the vast majority of those were written in 1965 when the Safe Boating Act was first passed. And you're telling and, us... And boating has changed yeah. dramatically since but, 1965. But your regulations really haven't. Some have. Mm -hmm. But the, the main statutes that we operate under, the vast majority of those were written 40-plus uh, years ago. So. Do you think they need to be changed, augmented? Or well, I'm not sure. I don't know if they need to be changed or not. It, it's Believe it or not, I'm not one of those that thinks that there's a law and regulation that can solve all the problems. Right. And as we spoke earlier, ultimately, you have to get the public buy-in to what you're wanting to do. Again, and, education. And if, and if they're behind you, then you can get done what you need to get done. But you can't force people to do things. They have to want to. Truly. Do you remember the um, the ad that was a national ad that had the, the Indian with the tear? Mm -hmm. Covered United States don't trash my land. Mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't it be nice if it had something about the water? You know, mm -hmm. some sort of... of media push that right. would let people know that whatever they do on land actually lands in the water. Right. Well, and you've noticed, I mean, a lot of communities now, through various grants, have put the uh, the storm drain placards or medallions in at the storm uh, yes. drain, uh -huh. reminding everyone what you put in here ends up someplace else. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think over the next 10 to 20 years, we'll probably start reaping benefits from that. Uh, I mean, it wasn't that long ago, really, I mean, in my lifetime, that uh, the Hudson River caught fire you oh, know, because right. of all the yeah. pollution. So we've come a long way since the early, the late 60s. I was going to ask you that. So how long have you been out on our water? Well, I've, I've worked for the Wildlife Agency for 30 years. And, have yeah. you been on Lake Rowland for 30 years? No, no. no. I'm, I've been in various parts of the state. But um, most of my work has been in Region 4. And I've been uh, in this regional capacity for the past uh, three years. And so how do you think overall the Tennessee River, our, our part of it? I think where, different... where it started out is when I was younger, it's much cleaner than it was. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, good. We need, to, we need to promote boating and swimming. Right. And, 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 and a lot of that cleaning, the, 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 the water quality is from uh, investments in, in infrastructure and in sewage treatment and in, mm -hmm. in storm drain work and, and all the, the uh, sewer mitigation that has been going on in the community mm -hmm. for the past several years that yep. we all love paying it once a month when we see that in our bill. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on our show. Oh, and thank, thank you for the invitation. Yeah, and I thank our viewers for joining us today. Remember what we do is REM. We remove trash and debris daily. We educate our community. And we monitor the stormwater and the health of our streams so that you have a healthier, cleaner, funner, which is not <laughs> English, I know, time on the lake. You can have two ways you can help us out. You can donate or volunteer. So join us. Thank you.